Welcome to CoreLogic's monthly housing market update. This month we look at the rate of capital gains up to the end of September 2016 and we examine some of the factors that have affected housing market conditions across the different regions. CoreLogic's September data showed a further 1% rise in dwelling values across the combined capital cities of Australia. That's following a 1.1% increase over the month of August and a 0.7% rise in July. The quarterly rate of growth increased to 2.9% across the capitals, which at face value is a strong rate of capital gains, but well below the pace of capital gains a year ago, when CoreLogic's hedonic index was up by 4% over the September quarter. The strong September quarter reading for home values was pushed higher by a 5% surge in Melbourne dwelling values and a 4.5% increase in dwelling values across Canberra. Sydney, where growth in dwelling values has generally been nation-leading over the growth cycle to date, showed the third highest pace of dwelling value growth over the quarter at 3.5%. Highlighting the diversity in the market, three of the eight capital cities recorded a fall in dwelling values over the quarter, with the largest decline in Darwin, where dwelling values were down by 4.5%. With dwelling values continuing to rise over the third quarter of the year across most of the capital cities, there's likely to be more focus on the factors that are driving growth across the housing market. Low mortgage rates are likely to be one of the factors providing some upwards pressure to housing demand. Mortgage rates have been cut twice now during 2016, with the most recent cut in August being the 12th reduction in the cash rate since November 2011. Australian borrowers haven't enjoyed mortgage rates this low since the early 1960s. Investors are also contributing a higher than normal level of demand to the housing market. The latest data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics shows that investors currently comprise 48% of new mortgage commitments. While that's down from a record high of 55% last year, it still indicates that housing investment is providing a higher than normal level of demand. The value of investment mortgages has once again been trending higher since May of this year. Low stock levels are likely to be another factor at play driving dwelling values higher in some cities. Low stock levels tend to create some level of urgency in the housing market with vendors holding more leverage over buyers at the negotiation table and buyers generally having little time to undertake their due diligence to make an informed and strategic purchase decision. Nationally, stock levels are approximately 2% lower than they were a year ago, but they're now starting to show the normal spring ramp up, which will provide a timely test for the market's resilience to higher stock levels. The shortage of stock may also be contributing to lower auction volumes that have been a feature of the auction market this season. Despite auction clearance rates surging higher over the past few months, auction volumes had been tracking about 16% lower over the first five weeks of the spring season. Sydney's auction clearance rate's been consistently above 80% each week during spring, and the Melbourne clearance rate's been averaging in this high 70% range. Low stock levels are also contributing to a downturn in transaction numbers. Year-on-year, -year, transaction numbers are down 11% nationally, with falls recorded across most of the capital cities. While lower transaction numbers are likely to be related to a reduction in housing demand in markets like Perth and Darwin, where dwelling values are falling, in stronger markets like Sydney and Melbourne, where year-on-year -year sales are down by 18% and 20% respectively, lower turnover is likely to be more attributable to the low number of homes that are currently available for sale. Importantly, there's likely to be some level of upwards revision to transaction numbers as the record number of off-the-plan sales move through to settlement. Additionally, other factors such as affordability constraints, tighter lending policies and high transactional costs are also contributing to less housing market turnover. Housing market conditions have been vastly different from region to region. In Sydney, the housing market is still showing the highest rate of annual growth across the capitals, with dwelling values 10.2% higher over the past 12 months. However, the quarterly trend has slipped back to third place after both Melbourne and Canberra reported a higher rate of capital gains over the September quarter. Listing numbers have recently started to trend substantially higher across Sydney, which is normal for this time of the year. However, with approximately 20,000 homes currently being advertised for sale, overall stock levels remain lower than they were a year ago, and newly advertised listings are tracking about 16% lower than the same time last year. With stock levels so low, Sydney is well and truly remaining a seller's market. Melbourne's housing market has seen dwelling values surge by 5% over the quarter, according to the CoreLogic Hedonic Index. The strong quarterly result was the highest of any capital city, and the annual capital gain at 9% was equal second highest with Canberra. Detached house values are rising at almost double the pace of unit values across Melbourne, which is at least partially related to the higher supply levels across the inner city apartment markets. 
Melbourne dwelling values are averaging 37 days to sell. That's up from 31 days a year ago. However, discounting rates have reduced, suggesting that sellers aren't having to be very flexible in their pricing expectations in order to sell a property. The Brisbane housing market has continued its trend of relatively sedate conditions with house values unchanged over the September quarter, while unit values were down by 1.3%. Over the past 12 months, Brisbane dwelling values have increased by 3%, which is the lowest pace of annual growth across the capitals outside of Perth and Darwin, where dwelling values have continued to retreat. The underperformance of the Brisbane housing market compared with Sydney and Melbourne does have a silver lining, with affordability constraints much less of an issue in this marketplace and rental yields substantially higher compared with the larger capital cities. Adelaide's housing market saw dwelling values rise by 2.6% over the September quarter, taking the annual growth rate to 6.5%. That's the highest pace of annual growth since August 2010. While growth was skewed towards detached housing over the September quarter, over the past 12 months, there's little difference between the housing types. House values were up by 6.5% over the past 12 months, while unit values have increased by 7.1%. Transactional activity appears to be under some subtle upwards pressure, with year-on-year -year sales increasing by 3.3%. The reasonably strong housing market results across Adelaide may come as a surprise for some, considering there remains some level of economic uncertainty across South Australia due to the wind down of the local manufacturing sector as well as soft commodity market conditions. Dwelling values across Perth have seen some further slippage over the September quarter, down 3.2%. The housing market has been in a downturn since December 2014 and the latest data shows that dwelling values have now fallen by a cumulative 10.4% since this time to be level with where they were in the late 2009 period. Buyer demand appears to have reduced with transaction numbers falling further over the past 12 months and the average selling time extending out to 75 days. With listing numbers remaining high across Perth, buyers have a lot of stock to choose from, providing very strong buying conditions. The Hobart housing market has shown an accelerating trend rate of growth, with dwelling values moving 8.7% higher over the past 12 months. That's the fastest pace of capital gains since 2007. The median house price in Hobart is just under $350,000, which is substantially lower than any other capital city, and the typical gross rental yield is the highest of any capital city at 5.2% and 5.5% for houses and units respectively. Despite the strong returns and the high yields, investors still comprise only a small proportion of mortgage demand across Tasmania. Based on the Australian Bureau of Statistics data, investors as a proportion of all new mortgages across Tasmania is the lowest of any state at 28.4%. The Darwin housing market has seen a further fall in dwelling values over the September quarter with local values down 4.5%. The quarterly decline was the largest of any capital city and takes the cumulative downturn in dwelling values to 11.1% since the market peaked back in May 2014. Housing demand has reduced substantially across the Darwin marketplace, which is reflected by transaction numbers falling by almost 19% over the past 12 months and rental markets showing a substantial year-on-year -year fall as well. Listing numbers remain elevated across Darwin, providing a large amount of choice for prospective buyers and making selling conditions challenging for vendors. The pace of capital gains across Canberra's housing market has shown some acceleration over the year, with dwelling values rising by 4.5% over the September quarter to reach growth of 9% over the past 12 months. The annual rate of growth is now tracking at the highest level since 2010, with most of this growth being driven by detached housing rather than apartments. Transaction numbers across the nation's capital were down by 3.6% over the past year, However, the September quarter has seen a lift in turnover compared with the June quarter, which supports the strong quarterly growth numbers and accelerating market conditions. Overall, the headline readings from the housing market remain strong. Dwelling values continue to rise across most capital cities, however, there remains a great deal of divergence between the regions and between the product types. Sydney and Melbourne continue to show a strong trend for capital gains, albeit at a slower pace than a year ago. Growth conditions appear to be accelerating in some of the smaller markets like Hobart, Canberra and to a lesser extent in Adelaide. Brisbane may not be far behind the accelerating trend with interstate migration into Queensland starting to pick up. But Perth and Darwin markets continue to retrace on the back of weak economic and demographic conditions. Policymakers and regulators will be monitoring the housing market closely. The most recent statements from the Reserve Bank seem to indicate a less comfortable view on the housing market than previous months, citing a recent strengthening in some markets along with rental conditions that are tracking at the slowest pace in several decades. 
A broad reacceleration in housing market growth rates may make it more difficult for the Reserve Bank to lower interest rates further for concern of overstimulating housing markets. Despite the ongoing strength in the housing market, at least at a macro level, there are plenty of headwinds that are likely to limit the pace of capital gains even if interest rates do move lower. Banks have tightened their lending policies and generally require larger deposits. Supply levels are at record highs and they'll trend higher over the coming months as approvals move through to the construction phase. Rental yields are at record lows, which may start to act as a greater disincentive to investors, particularly in markets like Sydney and Melbourne where the gross yield on a house is now below 3%. Housing affordability is becoming stretched, particularly in Sydney where dwelling values have substantially outpaced household income growth. Additionally, offshore investors are now a smaller component of housing demand due to stricter lending policies and more scrutiny around foreign buying rules. Despite these headwinds, with conservative asset classes like cash and government bonds offering low returns and share markets remaining volatile, it's likely that housing investment will continue to be a popular option. Although gross rental yields are at historic lows, they remain higher than the rates for cash deposits and are quite attractive when you factor in the growth in home values as well as the yield, especially if investors are using larger deposits. It certainly is interesting times across the housing market and it's certain we'll continue to see a great deal of interest in the performance of the housing market across Australia. For more analysis and research about Australia's housing markets, make sure you visit our website at www.corelogic.com.au.